Hello and uh, welcome to Politics Today. In this programme today we'll be discussing President Trump's visit to the UK in July and asking should we be rolling the red carpet out for him. And in today's programme I'll be joined by Mark Sutherland from uh, Creative Hub Productions and uh, Sig Cordell, leader of the Christian People's Alliance. So my distinguished guests, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Nice to see you Simon. Good to see you as well. Uh, Mark, I'll I'll start off with you because I consider you my kind of US uh, political (laughs) expert and anything US politics related, uh, you're the man to go to. Um, so, so Mark, what would you make of uh, President Trump's um, decision to come here in July? It's um, a state, it's not a state visit, but it's an official visit, uh, despite the fact that over a year ago, uh, our Prime Minister, Theresa May, promised uh, Donald Trump that he would have a state visit. Now, considering um, that uh, Macron, the French president, recently visited the White Mm. House and had an official state visit, um, shouldn't we be doing the same? Yes. I mean, in a a word, yes. I mean, uh, we've just seen Mr Macron and Mr Trump have this wonderful bromance, as uh, various people in the media actually describe. And of course, let's put it in context, Macron has gone over there, Merkel has gone over there, because it is about Iran. It is about companies from their nations that are doing business with the Iranians. So let's just put that on the table for the start. We can come back to that within the context of all that's happening geopolitically. Yes, you're absolutely right. Mrs May went over there. Then all the press went mad about the fact that she actually held his hand and uh, various people thought, oh, this is disgusting and all this kind of thing. And yes, we should roll out the red carpet. We are going to be negotiating, uh, here we go, that magic word, trade deals. Now, as far as I remember, their economy is the biggest, right? A rather wealthy company, country, that we need to be referring to. Um, So what we have is this big... We know, we constantly discuss when we're on this programme that we're in this huge spiritual battle. So we are in... So the spiritual battle is this, is that the left are turning around and going, no. We don't want this man to come to this to the country. Now, we need to negotiate. If they want to see the economy flourish and all this kind of thing, then let's go. That's the first thing. We also need, at a certain point, we're going to need their military support. We've just seen that play out. Syria is another issue, that bombing, etc., etc. And then suddenly, let's put these cards on the table. We have... London, we have the Mayor of London dictating international policy, foreign office policy of who we should invite to our nation. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I think that goes beyond his remit. Now, let's just see how things have begun. A lot of this started as soon as uh, President Trump became president. And let's just see how this is laid out within the context of him seeing the the economy in America improving and him wanting to have trade deals with with us and him then playing a major part, having conversations with the Chinese to the whole issue of Korea, where, you know, Chuck Schumer, Pelosi and everything saying Mr. Trump is now going to start third world war. And also another key thing, We have seen within America um, unemployment amongst black Americans be the lowest ever. So within the context of all this positive thing going on, we have people turning around and going, we do not want this individual to come to our country. And personally, they need to explain and give us a good reason why. Absolutely. Maybe you can answer that question, Sid, um, that uh, uh, the far left, uh, the likes of uh, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, uh, the Liberal Democrats and and others on the left are are literally having an hysteria fit about uh, President Trump visiting us in London with, uh, they say they're going to organise mass, mass demonstration. Now, isn't this offensive to the American people, the vast majority of the American people that elected President Trump as president? Yes. <clears throat> What's going on um, in the background is the fact that um, Donald Trump has opposed the entire liberal agenda. 
He's uh, appointed a, uh, cons a conservative Christian to the Supreme Court, which was an extremely important appointment because um, it basically brings the Supreme Court back into, uh, into harmony, if you like. Um, there is one judge there who, who will switch either way and is very uncertain, which I believe is Judge Kennedy. Um, but we've now got like four judges one side, four judges the other side, one judge which switches. And having that appointment was extremely important. Uh, had we had Hillary Clinton in the White House appointing a, a liberal to the Supreme Court, we'd have then had a clear liberal majority on the Supreme Court in America. So that was extremely important. But then he's also um, done other things like removing a lot of Muslim artifacts from the White House. Uh, he's constantly inviting Christians there. He's got Christian prayer counselors, which he's bringing into the White House. And he's basically saying Christianity has not been supported sufficiently in this country. Uh, he's taken clear stands against same-sex marriage. He's taken stands against abortion. He's taken stands against uh, transsexualism uh, all and assisted dying. All these sort of things which are being promoted by the Liberals, as well as his position on Islam, which I've referred to in one sense, but it's also in the way he's said, we've got to know who's coming into the country. And we can't just have open immigration policy and allow people just to come in without properly vetting them. And if no vetting is done, then we'll stop anyone coming in from that country until the vetting is done effectively, because we've got to know who's coming in. Now, people have called that the Muslim ban. Well, it's not a Muslim ban. It's, it's effective vetting that he said we've got to have. But um, the Liberals hate that. So his whole agenda is against the international agenda which the Liberals internationally are pursuing. Because all these issues which I've referred to, same-sex marriage uh, in, in particular, and assisted dying and transsexualism, they're all being pursued on an international basis. It's not just one country that's pursuing them. So he stands against their agenda. That's why they hate him. Uh, and, and Mark, uh, you know, if we, we look back at uh, previous presidents and prime ministers, the likes of uh, Margaret Thatcher had a very special relationship with, uh, with Ronald Reagan. Uh, we've had uh, Tony Blair had a very special relationship with Bill Clinton and also George W. Bush. And uh, it seems very much that um, David Cameron didn't really hit it off very well with uh, President Obama. And the state of the special relationship isn't really special anymore because the French have come in and uh, uh, stolen a march. Um, how important is it that we actually restore that uh, special relationship and the transatlantic alliance between the United States and Britain, considering that we have so much of a shared interest, not only a common language? Mm. We have a common language. I mean, our cultures in many ways are very different, but they are our cousins. We don't necessarily have time to discuss 1776 and all the working out of that, but they are our cousins. It's interesting what you say about working relationships. If we look at the ideology of Margaret Thatcher and if we look at the ideology of Ronald Reagan, it's very interesting that you have to go back now to the president of, uh, of Ronald Reagan to see in regard to conservatism. If you, actually, uh, if you actually look at Reagan's walk from left to right, having been involved in, in Hollywood and uh, liberalism there and, and, and left-wing thinking and fighting the unions and all the rest, is very much involved in that. And a lot of Americans refer to that and see this gap that's gone on. If you then look at uh, Blair and Clinton's relationship, Pat, Pat was just talking about, Sid was just talking about that, I apologise, where you were saying about, you know, liberal, liberal ideology. I think the relationship is, is important, but also because in many ways, you know, President Trump has distinctive roots in, in, the, in the UK that are, are rooted in, in uh, Scotland. The other thing is, is that we are going to need them, right? We cannot go around, anno you know, annoying various people and annoying that. So if we put this in a context, so, you know, Jesus, Jesus said, you know, uh, there will always be, before I return, there'll be wars and rumours of wars. That's the context that we are in. If we are building, as Bibi Netanyahu just revealed various things this week, if, if with what Iran is doing, having Mr. Obama creating some kind of deal, then giving away, you know, billions and billions of dollars on, on wooden pallets of actual cash, you know, not a digital transfer, bless him, but actual cash. So suddenly you have empowered this particular country 
and of course we then refer to Israel. We are going to have to have good relationships to deal with these issues. Syria, suddenly, we haven't got time to go and say what was bombed, what specifically was done and where and all the rest. But suddenly, we were talking to the Americans, we contributed to something. The French were talking to the Americans, we've all contributed. Within the context of what scripture is saying, coming back to that, as Jeremiah 49, so we, if you then uh, look at, I think, the verses 35 to 39, where it talks about breaking Elam's arrow. Are we at that point? So when we're going back to our relationship with America, we need a strong relationship for what is going to be happening ge geopolitically. Is we are, we've talked, we're about to celebrate the 70th anniversary of Israel, right? Are we at a Psalm 83 moment where Bill Salas talks about that, wonderful bloke who talks about that? Is it where all the neighbours in Israel are about to attack? Why am I saying these things? That I'm saying these things. The key thing is, is that the President of the United States has always been seen as the head of the Western world. And that is the crucial thing of what is about to pay out, play out here. And that's why we need good relationships with, with America. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Sid, if we, we look at um, uh, President Trump's uh, first year in, in office, or just over, um, it's an incredible success. Um, not only has he got the US economy booming, um, he's improved the welfare of ordinary Americans. Uh, he has also then, um, you know, uh, done almost the unthinkable in terms of international relations, and, and that's bringing the two Korean leaders, uh, the North Korean leader and the South Korean leader, together. Um, and now he's about to recognise um, Jerusalem as uh, Israel's capital as well. So, and defending Christian values as well. So surely Theresa May should look at this and say he's actually achieved more in his first year in office than President Obama achieved during his whole eight years as US President. Well, <clears throat> you're asking me two separate questions, really. Oh, One question is, um, what do I think of, um, of Donald Trump's uh, achievements? And the other question is, um, what should Theresa May be doing? But in terms of Donald Trump's achievements, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I would add to that um, what I believe is his achievement in, uh, in basically destroying Islamic State in Syria, which I think is almost entirely down to Donald Trump, uh, the extent to which uh, Obama was actually secretly giving help to some of these terrorist organisations is only beginning to emerge now. But uh, Obama's whole approach was dramatically different from Trump's approach on the international uh, on, on the international scene, and I certainly agree with you what you're saying about his economic achievements. A lot of people don't realise um, the extent to which it's important to support business to have a healthy economy. Um, a lot of socialists, Jeremy Corbyn included, tend to look at the economy as a cake. And uh, if you divide up the cake in a certain way and take money off the rich and give it to the poor, then we'll have a fairer society. But that's not how the economy is. The economy is more like a train where, where the engine is business. And if you've got a powerful engine and business is working effectively, then you've actually got money to support the carriages, which are the health service and education Absolutely. and the welfare and so on and so forth. Um, so destroying business means that you, have an un you haven't got money for, the, for services. Helping and supporting business means you have. And that's, what, that's the approach that Donald Trump is taking very strongly. You know, we've got to do much more to help and support business. And it's happening and it's working and it's making uh, America a much more prosperous country. Country. So absolutely that's right. Now the other question is, um, what about, what should Theresa May's approach be? Theresa May should be um, looking at entirely of what is in Britain's interest. And Mark has already said earlier that the importance of negotiating a trade deal and it's important to keep on board with Donald Trump from that point of view. But there's nothing that Donald Trump is doing currently that is against Britain's interest. I mean, Obama was saying, I'm going to put Britain at the back of the queue. And he was basically saying, Britain should vote to remain in the EU, it's in Britain's interest to stay in the EU, and if you don't, then um, don't think you're going to get any favours from America. Donald Trump has said, 
well, I'm going to put Britain at the front of the queue. And, uh, you know, absolutely, I'd love to negotiate a trade deal with you, but it'll be fair, it'll be, it'll be I'm not going to uh, avoid America's interest. Um, but Theresa May should be welcoming Donald Trump with open arms, saying, let's get on, let's get talking, let's get talking about things that are in our national interests. And absolutely, we should be giving Donald Trump a proper state visit to this country. We should be welcoming him and giving him whatever, whatever welcome should be appropriate to somebody who is a leader of the Western world. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, a similar kind of response to um, excellent comments made there uh, by Sid, that we should welcome uh, President Trump and give him a, a proper state visit. Now, why is Theresa May not doing this? Is she suddenly pondering to the extreme left-wing liberals or too afraid of public opinion um, to actually do what is morally right and actually invite our closest ally, which is the United States? And uh, let's not forget the role the United States has played in history over the last, uh, last century. They came to our rescue during the First World War, again in the Second World War, they prevented the Soviets from invading Eastern Europe and protected the peace during the Cold War. And, uh, you know, America is the, the greatest force and power in the world today, primarily because of its Judeo-Christian heritage. So isn't it time that Theresa May ignored what her critics say, ignored what public opinion says, and uh, welcomes President Trump with open arms and gives him what he deserves and that's a proper Absolutely. state, Absolutely, and I think there's a poll that's come out today where a third of our population say we're not really bothered, a third say, yeah, you should come over, and a third that say no. So it's not quite... It's not quite clear to the opposition to this. I mean, following what Sid has excellently said, we are talking about globalism. This is what we are fighting. We end up coming back to our dear friend George Soros and all the rat and all the disruption that they're trying to create in Europe. If we have been, we have been in the EU for about 43 years, which means that within the establishment thinking, as we're finding out this week with the House of Lords various comments on this, is that it is embedded. The, the whole point of being anti and his entrepreneur, etc., is embedded within the humanistic, atheistic representation that the EU have. So there is this fight going on within her, I think. I think that's what, and in one sense, I'll, I, I apologise to her in one sense, because I've quite seen this, but there is this fight going on. Because one thing, and it has to be said as much as this is unpopular, that in many ways, you know, she hasn't been standing up for Christians. Christians that have, uh, teachers that have lost their job because they've misgendered a child and all this kind of thing, and a nurse because they want to pray for someone in a hospital. She hasn't stood up for that, okay? So this is where, well, this is where we are at. I come back to it. A spiritual battle that's going on. And there is, a, there is the whole sea change that has to happen. We are going. Sovereignty and democracy, we are going to get, we are fighting to get back the sovereignty of our country. And the reason why President Trump then won the election, come back to our favourite subject in a sense, is that people of, of a certain generation looked at the Constitution on what it actually means and what it represents. And someone is turning around and saying, I want freedom, self-determination. That, and that is what the Constitution talks about. That is what America stands for, that dream. Go over there, you know, work from the bottom and work hard. We then have a kind of thinking, as Sid was alluding to, of, of big government, of you have this cake, big government, and we will divide this everything up and we'll have this wonderful utopian dream. But the key thing is a wonderful utopian dream that they want without the Judeo-Christian culture of our nation. And I think we are seeing, spiritually in the natural, this playing out massively, this fight. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and Sid, if we consider the, uh, the, the media coverage on this one, which is uh, predominantly extremely anti-Trump, it actually empowers um, the extreme uh, liberal left or the militant left, as, uh, as we're seeing, the likes of Sadiq Khan and, and others who want to organise a mass uh, Trump um, anti-demonstrations for his visit on Friday the 13th of July. Um, isn't the media playing a role in all this when it's actually acting against British interests because surely British interests are a closer alliance and relationship with the United States, not only for trade, but also for the sake of uh, freedom and liberty around the world? 
Yes, of course they are, and uh, the media are pursuing an agenda, and which is, I find, frustrating, but that's what's going on. And sometimes I've challenged the media and said, look, you're not actually reporting the truth. What you're reporting is what you want to report according to your agenda, and that is actually extremely dangerous. Um, but the, the situation is, you see, that T Theresa May herself is um, very frightened of, of negative media reports, and she feels she wants to go down a line that is popular. Now, if you don't mind me talking about her for a minute, he, see, under Ian Duncan Smith, Theresa May was the party chairman. And Ian Duncan Smith had a three-line whip against homosexual couples being allowed to adopt children. Theresa May made a speech at the Conservative Party conference where she talked about the Conservative Party being perceived as, as the nasty party. Now, a lot of people don't even realise what she was referring to, but what she was referring to was not allowing homosexual couples to adopt children. And that is, we're being perceived as nasty for not doing it. Now, she was one of the driving forces that actually wanted to change the whole Conservative approach from largely adopting Christian family values, which the party had adopted, right up to Ian Duncan Smith, to then changing and adopting liberal social values, which um, Michael Howard came in with, that, with those values. Now, Michael Howard's chosen successor was, da was David Cameron. What Michael Howard said is people choose to lead their lives differently these days and we've got to adapt our policies accordingly. The buzzwords was modernisation. We've got to modernise the party. Now, when they, when, when they did that, you see, what was that was then, um, if you like, reached its nadir, in then introducing same-sex marriage, which David Cameron did in 2013. But Theresa May has been a core part of this fundamental change in conservative values, in, in, in liberal values. That's why she is therefore very much supporting the whole liberal uh, media in, in their drive, which is why I believe also she's not really welcoming Donald Trump. But it's not the same on economic issues. On economic issues, Theresa May has been very good and very strong and supported the need to balance the budget and so on and so forth. And um, she, she, she's, she's taken uh, a good line, obviously, on Brexit, even though she herself voted to remain. Um, since uh, even during the referendum, I said, um, Theresa May is standing back from uh, a lot of the debate, um, so she can be somebody that can come in as a unity candidate when the referendum's over. So she's taken, but she's taken a good stand on Brexit, and we welcome that. But we have to understand exactly where, properly, where she's coming from. Absolutely. I went down to the last uh, five minutes of the program, so I kind of need to uh, uh, sum up. Um, now, Mark, if, if you were the Prime Minister, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the country would be in, but, uh, you know, <laughs> be, be an interesting place no, nevertheless. <laughs> but having said that, uh, if you were Prime Minister, uh, what would you do to try and encourage um, President Trump and, and make him feel welcome? I know that he's not everyone's so-called uh, flavour of the month, um, but the fact is he's our greatest ally. We need the United States and that the world has always been a safer place when uh, Britain and the United States are at the helm of the international on the international scene. I mean, I mean, the key, the key issue, and and uh, Sid was alluding to this. Basically, all the left, etc., want to go back to certain aspects of them. Want to go back to Europe. Would like a second referendum and all the rest. So, if if you are putting me in that honorary position, we the honorary position would be we are leaving the EU or we're out of it. And you would then work hard to build those relationships. And as Sid has quite rightly laid out the liberal agenda. If I was in that kind of position or any other political position, <laughs> another story, that it, it, I would be representing, you know, my faith, what scripture says. Now, that's not going to go down too well anyway. So it is about building those personal relationships. And what would I do? Well, you would turn around and go, you're coming over here, mate. You're landing at Heathrow. We we'll now play the Star Spangled Banner and we will get on with it. The wonderful thing about a democracy, if people want to object and protest, absolutely. But the interesting thing is when the left do that, it seems to be on the border sometimes, we, well, we believe in free speech, but we don't want to listen to your opinion because you don't agree with us. So we have to... Discourse is important. It's how we conduct ourselves is another issue. Absolutely. But we must not 
back down from that. So in a word, I'd invite him over and ask what shade of red carpet he would like. <laughs> Probably scarlet red. And, uh, you know, Sid, I think we have to ask the, uh, you know, very, very important question, uh, and this actually threatens our very democracy, that those who are part of the anti-Trump brigade who are organising these ma uh, uh, mass rallies and those also then support the position of, uh, uh, of Remain when it comes down to our relationship with the European Union, um, they seem to only like democracy when it delivers the result that they like when the result goes against, they like it, they don't believe in the system anymore. And, and uh, so therefore, isn't there violent and antagonistic anti-Trump support, anti-Brexit support, a threat to our democracy? Well, yes, it's an a interesting question as to whether these liberals do really believe in democracy or not. I Absolutely. mean, Islam certainly doesn't believe in democracy. They don't, uh, there's no democracy in, in most Muslim countries. But um, there was no, equally no democracy in communist countries. And a lot of the liberalism actually comes from communist ideology. So, um, and I remember when I was a student, um, one of the things I used to say as a student was, um, you know, of the, of the far left, um, these people don't believe in democracy. They're not interested in democracy, therefore they don't want me to be heard. But if you believe in democracy as I do, then you believe that I should have an opportunity to be heard, an opportunity to make my case here in this forum. And democracy is something which is extremely value, valuable and something which we as Christians absolutely uphold, the right for every voice to be heard and for every case to be put forward. And the American people have elected Donald Trump and we should be working with the person that they have elected. The British have decided to leave the European Union and the idea that we should somehow say, well, we don't like that decision, therefore we'll have another referendum is absolutely, totally wrong. And uh, within 30 seconds, Mark, I'll let you have the uh, final word of the, of the programme. Um, how do we convince uh, the mainstream, decent British society of the importance of uh, President Trump's visit to the UK in July? I think, I think uh, we're actually beginning to do that. But the number one thing, uh, without sounding repeating myself, as I say, this is a spiritual battle that we need to be praying about. And we need to look at those opportunities to engage and have those, co and have those conversations. As Sid quite rightly said, it, in regard to shutting that, and people want to shut that down. But we need to combat that with facts, very calmly. This is what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, gentlemen, I just want to thank you so much uh, for joining me on politics today. Uh, done a great job. Thank you very much. And uh, I think it's very important uh, that uh, we pray about uh, President Donald Trump's visit uh, to the UK in July and that we support it and that we don't buy into the lies of the liberal left and their media supporters. So thank you for watching this edition of Politics Today.